Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to ADA Adventure Centre in Broderstrom, where we are asking an important question. South Africa was recently graced with the Honda CB500X. We rode it, and quite liked it. But how does it compare against some of its biggest rivals, particularly the Europeans? So here we have the KTM 390 Adventure and the BMW G310 GS. This exact GS is from BMW Motorrad Westrand and is in dashing rally colours. It has some mighty GS shoes to fill and gets off to a rocky start. According to the spec sheet, there are some bits lagging. It has the smallest motor, a 313cc single, pushing 34 horsepower and 28 newton meters of torque, shoving along 175 kilograms of wet weight. Where it makes up ground is with its price starting at 114,300 Rand. Then we have the reigning champion, the KTM 390 Adventure, more so the 2023 model with its shiny new spoked wheels, the only spoked wheels in this test. Its motor is up one on the GS, with 60 more cc's in its single cylinder, pushing 44 horsepower and 37 newton meters of torque. It also grains some ground with weight, at 172 kilograms fully fueled, plus it has a sizable stockpile of electronics like a TFT dash, switchable trash control and ABS, and a two-way quick shifter. Of course, more goods means more muller, so the KTM leaves showroom floors from 124,000 Rand. And now on to the challenge from the land of the rising sun. It's the Honda CB500X, and on paper, it'll put up quite a fight. The CB has not one but two whole cylinders, combined to create a class smashing 471 cc's. Of course, with more displacement comes more oomph, with 47 horsepower and 43 newton meters of torque. Even with all this grunt, the price is still less than the KTM at 120,000 Rand. Where it loses out to Team Orange though is in its lack of electronics and a weight sitting at a slightly rotund 199 kilograms. Those are the numbers on paper, but how do they translate to real life? Helping us today is the glamorous queen of adventure, Skinny van Skultweg. He's in his 20s and exactly the sort of person who'd buy into these bikes, it's Vincent King. We start off with some intelligent to and fro. That clip W looks amazing. I agree. I no. Nope. I don't know. It's not a girly bike. I don't know. It's not it's, a girly like, bike. It's the same colour as your hair. It, it is a... <laughs> it's not. It's more roughly. It's not. It's roughly. And it's the only one that's got like a bit of a nose. Tomorrow I go blonde. With the philosophy thoroughly concluded, it was down to riding. Well, more specifically, skinny riding. Let's go. Ooh, ah, okay. The BMW is the smallest of this group. Don't be scared, little one. And that does give a feeling of confidence. Okay, around the corner. Wow. Okay. This is like riding a guinea pig. This is so small. And despite its small stature, it wins the top trump in this group for the longest suspension travel at 180 millimeters. But come on. Take this bump. Take this bump. The 390, on the other hand, has a strong off-road racing pedigree. Okay, we're off. We're off on the orange monster. Woohoo! Despite the BMW feeling smaller and lighter, the honours of lightest motorcycle actually go to the 390, tipping the scales at 172 kilograms with all its vital fluids on board. Okay, and over here... As we pointed out earlier, it's the only one of this group with spoke wheels. And to many avid adventurers, they wouldn't enter a showroom for less. Small bumps, woo! Bigger bumps, bigger bumps, yay! Woo! Okay, big, big, big bumps. Beyond that, the 390 makes use of KTM's age-old know-how about steel trellis frames, suspension from the off-road experts at WP, and brakes by Brembo's Asian subsidiary, BYBRE. Okay, wait, slide, 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 yeah! It's gonna like a brakes. And that single motor offers oodles of grunt, the most mid-range grunt out of the three, all while the bike looks like it wants to devour someone. Like a 
like I say, this is riding exactly what I thought a 390 would feel like. And now we move over to the Challenger, the Honda CB500X. Come on. Okay, but it sounds like a Honda. I don't know exactly how all Hondas sound like, but the few I have ridden, it sounds like them. Very smooth. It's like taking a bath with bubble bath in it. You know, the bubbles and maybe a glass of wine. Much of that is down to the extra cylinder slotted next to the first. But the CB has some issues. Where the GS leads the suspension travel race at 180 millimeters, the KTM comes in at a close second at 177, while the Honda is half a lap behind at 150 millimeters. Ah, okay, my intestines are jumping a bit higher. Not the bike though, not that much higher. While the suspension travel isn't much to boast about, the front suspension brings the Honda back into the game a bit. Those shower big piston forks work wonders under pressure. The Honda might be intimidating there because it's a little bit bigger than the other two. Um, okay, around the corner here. It doesn't take the corner that well. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. And with that, we decided to test the engines a little bit more with a drag race. But because this is adventure riding, we would race through ADA's notorious sand pit. It could be a race of attrition. Skinny boarded her favorite orange bike, Vincent found himself in the hot seat with the Honda, and I got the BMW, which I decided to decide was a good thing. Right, normally I'd be very worried about a drag race, but this is going to be different. Through the sand trap, it's going to be different. Yeah, I've got less horsepower, but it means I'm going to spin less. Yeah, you see. Also, I'm a bit heavier than the other two, which means I'm going to have more traction going through the... Yeah, definitely. And this bike's a bit lighter, which means it'll whiz through. So, it's, it's all going to add up. It's all going to add up. You'll see. It's going to be brilliant. And it wasn't. And, okay, they got away a bit, but... No, they're still ahead. They're still ahead. I'm losing. I'm losing. I'm losing. I'm I've lost! I've lost! How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! That was dodgy but brilliant. So horsepower was indeed king through the sand. This made Skinny and me a bit angry, so we decided to get Vincent and his behemoth back with a newly founded Can It Be Picked Up in the Sand by a Girl Test. Luckily, we are just the person for the job. Oh, grow up, it's 2023, for crying out loud. Whew, right, GS. Come on, GS, it's the lightest, it's the smallest, and the, the 1200, you got like those cylinders sticking out the side so they don't fall over properly. This doesn't have cylinders, but maybe it's got the cylinder energy, so. <laughs> Meanwhile, the KTM is three kilograms lighter, but it doesn't show it. Right, KTM. It just looks heavy. I don't know why it does. It just looks okay. <laughs> That's not so bad. And on that note. Vincent's big red bane. Whew. Okay, Honda, it's um it's 20 kilograms heavier than the other two. Don't know where they put it all in one of the cylinder obviously. It's got more torque, got more horsepower, it's got more Hey Lavi, put your back in it. Huh? Don't listen to her, you can do it! Feel your inner woman. Do it for all women everywhere. I'm not going to pretend that was easy. <laughs> this thing is heavy. Sorry, Honda. Yo, I love your bike, but it's a bit of a polka. <laughs> Ask me, I know.
At this point, we are perhaps being a little harsh on the Honda and decided to do some top speed runs. Vincent took the reins on this one because he's young and frankly expendable. He started on the little GS that performed well in handling in the pickup test, but with 34 horsepower at its disposal, it did its best. Okay, and off we go with the BMW. 140, come on little BMW. 150. Uh, that looks about it. Let's see, 158, 159. Vincent set off on the KTM, armed with 10 more horsepower than the GS. Let's see what you can do. Oh yes, oh, you want to go. Quick shifter for the win. Oh, spicy start. 168, 170, 170, what? 390, you're cheating. 176. And with a definite new leader, we turn our attention to the Honda. Yes, it has three more horsepower and six more newton meters, but it's also big, with its comfortable big screen serving as a disadvantage in this case. It's grunt versus resistance. And here we go on the Honda, the big boy. Oh, this thing pulls away hard. This thing wants to go. I think this might be it. Let's see. 160. I think this big windscreen's going to stop us from hitting great speeds. 167. Come on. 170. What's it? 71. 173. 174. 175. So Grunt lost to resistance by one kilometer power. With all that tomfoolery out of the way, we decided to do something more sensible and switch going fast to how quickly they can stop going fast. For that, we headed to ADA's dirt skid pan, famous for skidding. Skiddy ready to her brake fingers and set off on the KTM. Each bike will be ridden at the same speed and brake at the same point. And there we have the KTM setting the benchmark. Unlike the others, it can switch off its rear ABS and we will see how that affects it. But for now, the Honda heads down the pan, skinny brakes hard, but no, it falls short, or in this case, long, of the KTM. The BMW is small and nimble, so surely it can, no. In fact, it did the worst of the lot. So it appears that if you need to brake hard on a skid pan, you want the KTM. And now we turn our attention to an even more real world consumerism to answer a profound question. Which is the easiest to ride pillion on? And once again, we have just the person for the job. <sighs> All right, despite what people might think, I am not tall. When you meet me in real life, I'm really short. More specifically, my body is quite long. My legs are tiny, tiny, tiny little legs. Tiny or short? Never mind, keep going. She knows how to make a man, you know, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, now, first rule of getting on a motorcycle, never put your foot over there and then climb on because maybe your rider isn't paying attention. You put your foot there and the whole thing collapses over. That would be bad. So you need to swing your leg over. All right, you ready? Oh, am I? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, jeepers, what are you doing back there, honey? I'm climbing on the motorcycle. Holy crap! <laughs> Yeah. Wow! I'm on! I'm on! Okay. I'm on! It's not so bad actually on the back here. I thought it'd be like hard and uncomfortable and cramped. How are you feeling? Can you speak for yourself, Bellface? And that's the little GS. Let's try Mr. On Stilts Honda. Okay. Oh, yeah. Do you maybe want to warn me about this? Always be prepared. Just... Always be prepared. <laughs> Why are you sickling so much? This is a lot more cramped than the GS. That's a bit weird. I thought the GS would be like the really sort of cramped one. This is... Seat's nice. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> like I've got a monkey on my back. While the Honda is just tall, the KTM is tall and, um, protruding. Are you going to do a leap this time? No, I'm just going to get on. 
I might have to leave, this looks tall. Problem is with these things, you know, these wrecks. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Are you there? Wait, 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 I'm nearly on. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Why are you doing like that? <sighs> Why is the seat so hard? And with all shred of dignity gone, we headed to one of ADA's air-conditioned conference rooms to sit down for a chat. First, it was onto the sensitive topic of the little BMW, a topic that went down surprisingly well. I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't expect it to because uh, you know, I didn't expect it to perform. And then when you get onto it, it, it's, it feels so toyish, so breakable, so you don't really mind throwing it around. Yeah. Um, you go hell for if leather. If you do happen to crash it, you'll find that the... Uh, bull it's an expensive... <laughs> tell me toy. that now after weekend. Shh, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you that now because if I told you that before, you would have been scared. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Vincent, you also had a good time with it by the I, looks of... I did. It's, it's really light and nippy. It feels like you could yeah. sort of attack anything with it. But what we really came to find out is how the Honda stands up to the old champion, the KTM 390. So now I'm going to put you all in the choppy block. Right, here we go. If you were to buy one of these three motorcycles with your own money, which one would it be? Skinny. Well, I've got a full set of orange underwear, so I'm going to stay color-coded and go for the little baby KTM. I'm going to keep to that. So Skinny's basing her decision on matching her underwear. Um, uh, which one is going to best suit your leopard skin? Uh? Well, yeah, in that case... <laughs> um, look, I really enjoyed the, the Honda. It was really comfortable, really nice to ride. I'm also in two minds because the, the KTM was a lot quicker than I expected it to be. A lot, very nice and nimble. For proper dual sport stuff, I think I'd want the KTM, but if I had to ride it every day, I'd want the Honda. It's Okay, okay it's you are right. Nice. We did shoot this over two days. You kind of notice the clothing sort of changed. <laughs> uh, last night we were done shooting yesterday. We all had to ride, to take one and ride home. Without sort of thinking, immediately I sort of thought to myself, Honda. And mm. I mean, I don't know why. This was one, wasn't a considered decision. It's just my subconscious said, get on the Honda. And it is, it's sort of the bike I want to ride home on afterwards uh, and I think it might be the bike I would actually buy however there will be cases when I'm on a dirt road and I'm having a good time and at that point I'm gonna wish I was on the KTM and that is all we have time for this week we'll be back again next week with more riding more bikes more kit more roads and some advice about motorcycling cameras see you then